when did you first start to do creative stuff? Like, were, were you putting on plays when you were a kid? No, 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 no. No, I didn't do any of that. I'd go to the movies. That was my big thing. I, I'm a movie fan. I would go to, like, see every movie that ever came out. In my town, there were five movie theaters. There was the Mayfair and the St. James. They got the first run theater uh, movies. I mean, like, you know, all big movies that came out would go right there. You know, whatever was released in New York was released there at the same time because it was a resort town. So there was always a lot of people there in the summer, especially in the summer. But they did keep that chain going. Then you had the Lyric and the Baronet and you had the Paramount. And so the movies would move around. The Lyric had international films, always had foreign films there. So in terms of creative uh, juices, like from me, it was always, I was always like in, a, uh, in the audience. I was every Saturday and Sunday go to the movies, sometimes during the week if I could. Maybe I sneak out and do it. How did it start for you to get into acting? Did, uh, like well, when was it, that first moment where you're like, I, I, I want to pursue this? I was thrown into this in a kind of a weird way because I, I was a hairdresser. I worked at my sister's beauty salon and I got thrown into like going, uh, she had me go to New York. She was the enterprising, she was the head of the family basically. My mother and father were there, but they were like kind of like on the sidelines, you know. I was working for her. I, I didn't know desire to become a hairdresser or anything. I was cutting grass. She's just I like, was, Danny, you're gonna come work with me? <laughs> I was cutting grass. Well, she, I was graduating high school and, and was not gonna go to college. I was gonna go get a job, whatever it was. Now, the fortunate thing was that she had this beauty parlor and, and she said, uh, you come, come to work with me. And I said, I don't, I don't even do this. Uh, but I'll do it because I, you know, this is cool. So she sent me to school and I went to school and I. So you went to like cosmet yeah, cosmetology school, school in Beauty Asbury. School. She buys me a smock and she gives me the, the wig block and she gives me all the tools of the trade. And I'm not, you know, it's the summer and she's showing me I'm setting my mother's hair and my aunt's one of my, aunt, you know, yeah, and your girlfriends and practicing and comes time to go to school and she drops me off in front of the place and I walk up stairs and to the big room that's got all the stations in it, the Wilford Academy, Beauty Academy it was called. And I walk in, I don't know what to expect, right? And there's 30 girls in right. there. Of course. <laughs> My age. So you're like, this is awesome. <laughs> I immediately call, go downstairs to a pay phone. Right. And I call my sister. And I say, anything you want for the rest of your life, ask me to do it. Because you just sent me to heaven. <laughs> this is like... So all we did all summer is look for this, <laughs> all the guys. And then I walk into the door, there's, I mean, one's better looking than the next. And they're all like, uh, you know, there were two or three other guys there. But it's okay. A couple, little competition doesn't hurt. When you first got into acting, yes. how did your parents react? They loved it. They thought... See, the thing about being the baby in the family, which I was, basically I was like treated like the prince of the family. My mom and dad were there all the time, but I hung out with my sisters, like all, always. I had a couple of girl cousins. I had a lot of women in my life, and it was a good thing. You know, it was like a real nurturing thing. And you know, they weren't easy on me all the time, but they were protective of me all the time. Yeah. I never had to look over, I, I never looked over my shoulder. Like, it was, if they, they always had my back, my sisters. Besides my sister Angie giving me a job when I got out of high school and giving me a, what, what could have been a career, which was, I was making money because she wanted her business to expand. She was adding this whole thing of makeup and we were thinking about 
doing a line of makeup evangelist stuff and whatever, but I had to learn about the business. So she sent me to New York to go find somebody to teach me how to apply the makeup, do it, look at different products and everything. And I found a woman and the woman said to me, I do teach a class in makeup, but I do it at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. So I went to the place and I said to them, can I take this woman's course? Yeah. And they said, yes, if you enroll as an actor. Huh. So I said, okay. And I did it. And then I started auditing the other classes. Anyway, long story short, I got bitten by the bug and became an actor instead. What, what was your break? What, what was the big break moment? Was it Taxi? Was there something before Taxi well, that you know, kind of set I you did, on the... Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was a pretty damn good movie. Oh, that's right. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was like about five years before, four or five years before Taxi. So, I, but I guess Taxi was the one that really made it, uh, made it all happen. The transition for you into directing, mm -hmm. um, how did that happen? Like I told you I, that I, I constantly went to the movies when I was a kid, and um, I went to see the Battle of Algiers. You know the movie? It's a yeah. Conor Corvo movie? Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, and that was the movie that really uh, uh, got me into like uh, the mode of wanting to direct. So I... I, uh, then I started studying about it and trying to figure it out, how to do it. So I, I did short films, Super 8 films, 16 millimeter films. And then I got a grant from AFI. Really? Yeah. Happened to be the same time that Cuckoo's Nest was being released. So that was like in 1974, I think. That movie did really well. It was nominated for a million Academy oh, yeah. Awards. And... We were shooting, I was shooting uh, uh, the little movie at AFI during the same time that they were in the theater downtown where they did all the Academy Awards. And um, we were outside shooting, using the crowds. For your short. From, for the short film, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're filming a short film and you're filming crowds that mm -hmm. are going to see the movie that you're in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, winning Academy, and they were inside winning Academy Awards. They'd set up these bleachers out in front, and all the movie stars would go in, and then they're doing their thing. Meanwhile, a lot of the fans stayed outside, waiting right. for them to come out. So the film that Rhea and I were making at that time with the AFI dough, we put a scene in it, in the end, we mean an ending, where the characters in the movie all win Academy Awards. <laughs> the three characters in the movies. So we went and bought these little statues and, you know, there was a place called Rent-A-Rec. This guy, Dave Schwartz, would uh, rent old actors and people who didn't have a lot of dough, second-hand cars. They called it Rent-A-Rec. It was in, it was in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. And is he from Jersey? That sounds like a Jersey kind of thing. I don't know if he's from thing. Jersey. I'm not sure where Dave Schwartz is from, but it, it, it was a place where everybody went and got their cars. He had an old limousine. It was a piece of, it was really in disarray. And we rented it from him. He actually loaned it to him, gave it to us. And we got a guy, one of the student filmmakers that we worked with, and he was the driver and we got him a little hat and we got in the back seat and we talked our way in through the stanchions with the guard. And I took my grandfather's name, Lodovico Mocello, and I used that as the director's name in the movie and we talked, we said, Mr. Mocello has to get in. He's got to be in there. And they opened the stanchions. We drove the junky car in. <laughs> Rhea and I got out. And we went into the theater, and we had the cameras rolling. And we had the car there. And we had a few extras of our own background actors who were also part of the crew. And all the students, the way you do, you put your, you, you help your friends out. But the people in the stands didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so they, they like thought that the real people were coming out. And we had, I had a tuxedo on where he was in a nice dress. And uh, we were all, you know, had people buzzing around us. We came out and all of a sudden all these people swarmed around the car and we got great footage and we got in and we left. When I cut the film, I just found this. And she was off mic, 
But she said, like that, right? And I got somebody to loop it. It was exactly right. Who was he? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know, but they were like all jumping all over the place. It was just like, and it was, of course, that was before Taxi, so nobody knew who I was. You can't attribute it to the, the fame of television. If you like that clip, we've got a lot more where that came from. Be sure to check out our full conversations by subscribing to the channel so you won't miss our new videos as they come out each week.